Well, hi. <laughs> First of all, I would like you to introduce you to my eight-month-old niece. And I mean, what you see here, I'm really excited to see her playing with uh, Yellow Fi, by the way, uh, when she's three years old then. Um, she's playing very hard. She is, um, she's a pro gamer, basically. Yeah. Um, and this is what she will do. Um, um, for the, maybe for the next five years, and now nah, even, I think, even far more beyond, because um, we are playing our entire life, and we are collecting experience, and play is something very, very pervasive and important in our life. And if we take back a look to the evolution of games, then games have been a cultural ex uh, asset. They are a cultural practice, and they are triggering experiences. And uh, in so many formats and variations, as you can see on the, on the slide here. And, um, well, you know, at some point, and it's often when we enter school and we prepare our professional life, when we open the books, then play, this magic moment of play is somehow stepping back into the background of our lives. And then it seems that we start to see pair play and work very much, and it doesn't seem to mesh up anymore, you know? And this is why our offices often look like this. Yeah, they are designed to match the separation in the system. But there are some very well-known companies like, uh, you probably know them, like Facebook, for example, or Google, who are using the asset of play into their philosophy. And they are creating a very playful framework to enhance uh, motivation, fun, creativity, and at the end, also productivity, which is basically a very capitalistic approach, right? So in my perspective as an urban planner, and when I take a look at the spaces we design, I often see that um, we design places which match those both systems, you know? Okay, you can play basketball at one hand, but we're restricted in the time, so we have this kind of clash of system. And um, it is even like this that, I mean, this is not a user-centered design anymore. I mean, this is a place where uh, skaters are restricted in their, well, sportive activity, in their experience, how to experience the city. And um, probably by doing this, um, it can be that we lose the public realm. Yeah? And more important, also the citizens. So the question basically is, um, how can we build cities that invite us to play, to avoid this kind of paradoxon? And I say, well, let's take games even far more beyond the screen and putting them into the real space. Yeah? And this is what we're actually doing at the Oberhafen in Hamburg, which is a post-industrial um, site located in the center of the city. And what we have done there is to create a um, location-based game here via QR codes, and we asked two uh, different classes of two different universities to engage into this game. And what they did there was to use technology like mobile devices and uh, to tackle the challenges on site. And within one week, in the first round of this play, they were able to create different approaches and different solutions, different content to this area, connected to the area. But the more important was that within the game, they created a social experience because they needed to team up and they needed to speak with each other. Second thing was that they created a spatial connection with the area because they were immersed into the space. And the third thing was that they created a way of collaboration. They needed to produce content and they went through the process of creation into a creative process. So let me show you just um, one of the results. And uh, this was one group um, who actually tried um, to identify different meaningful spots for the area. And this is, I think, has to do with this immersion they were able to, able to make by entering the space. So, and then they started within the game to find conceptual ideas, first conceptual ideas, to be developed there, and how to reconnect the area um, to the higher perspective of the city to 
link it to the city. And uh, since they made this spatial experience, they were also able like, to relocate specific solutions into the space here at the Oberhafen, and uh, even made some very specific suggestions, like, for example, green roof as a measure for rainwater management, or even trying to find solutions for energy issues um, So in the first round. So the game at this point, which we developed there, was to use it as a vehicle to create different solutions. So imagine what could happen when you scale up such a game and you invite citizens to play. So at one hand, we have citizens in our, in our, in our city. We have the city planner. Yeah? But the missing link actually is the game designer who is able to create the play experience and to merge the most precious thing a citizen can bring. It's the play experience. And the urban planner who knows about the, the system of planification and about the rules, about the spaces of negotiation. So the game designer is very, very crucial. And um, let me tell you this, that I think in the nearest future, we, have, we will have in Hamburg maybe one or no, maybe some of the first game labs integrated in our system of planification and in our participatory culture. So this is my open call to all game designers out there and developers in the gaming industry. Your city needs you. Thank you so much.